Hi viewers and listeners, welcome back to 11 8 we have got another movie review for you, and it's just me by myself. Yep, no one else wanted to watch this movie, everyone else made convenient excuses about family engagements and dinners and going to London and stuff. I don't believe a word of it, to be honest, but then that's what mates are for, isn't it, eh? To lie to each other. Why not? <laughs> uh, Justin Smear might watch this back, and... Um, That'll be an interesting conversation. So I am going to be talking about Willy's Wonderland, which was released in February of this year, 2021. So right on the cutting edge, brand new movie. Normally we talk about old classics that were made in the 1500s. Um, Bond feels like it's made in the 1500s sometimes. Um, so this is going to be different. Um, we'll see how it goes. I should warn you that uh, I'm likely to be talking about spoilers. I mean, since this is a film that's of this year, within seven to eight months of, since release, at time of reviewing, I think it's probably fair to say that there's going to be sp some spoilers in this. So if you haven't seen the film and you do have a passing interest in it, then go and fucking watch it. Don't watch this. Go and watch that. Then come back here and listen to me talking about it. So I'm going to quickly go through the cast and a brief synopsis. Cast, we have Nicolas Cage as the lead role in this, um, which is a bit of an odd choice. Um, why he would do it, I mean, not why they would choose him. I mean, Nicolas Cage is a household name. He plays a character called, just simply referred to as the janitor. He doesn't say a single word throughout this movie either. We have an em Emily Toster, who plays the character Liv, and she's kind of the feisty young female that wants to um, bring it all down. Now, I believe that Emily Tost also featured in um, the Mayans MC, which is, as I understand it, is a spin-off from Sons of Anarchy TV show. So if you ever watched Sons of Anarchy, then you might have watched Mayans MC and recognise Emily. Beth Grant, who plays the sheriff in this, female sheriff. Interesting, um, Beth Grant. She's one of those women that when you see her, you go, oh yeah, I know her, but her name, you wouldn't have a clue. If someone says, oh yeah, it's got Beth Grant, you'd be like, who the fuck's that? But you see her, you're like, oh, oh yeah, I've seen her before. Rick Wrights. Now, I'm not aware of this actor. Uh, I think he's mostly done TV work and maybe some cameo roles in movies. Uh, he plays Tex McAdoo, who runs, or owns Willy's Wonderland. Chris Warner, who plays a character called Jed Love, um, he's like a mechanic. Um, he actually picks up Nicolas Cage and he's, he's broken down Camaro in this movie. And he's kind of the setup man. And, you know, when you watch it, you'll understand. And some sort of love interest for Emily Well, more like an infatuation, um, you know, unrequited love type bollocks. Uh, a guy called Kai Kadlek, he plays Chris who does everything that Emily says, or everything that uh, Liv says. Um, you know, walk over hot coals for me. Oh, okay then. You know, just hope that he's going to get a shag. Ridiculous, really. So the synopsis of this film. Nicholas Cage is driving like a lunatic. Um, his car gets four blown out tyres. Mechanic takes him back to the local town. Can't afford to pay the mechanic's bill, uh, cannot access an ATM or cash machine as we refer to them here isn't it, in England to withdraw the cash needed to pay the mechanic to fix his car up because they won't accept um, Visa debit or MasterCard credit for some reason. Um, so offers for him to work off the debt. Um, part of that is to go to Willy's Wonderland, meet up with a local sort of business magnate or whatever uh, who owns Willy's Wonderland and says, right, clean all this place up and I'll see you in the morning, and if you do that, do a good job of it, then I'll pay to have your car fixed. Job done, think, okay, all right, night's hard graft, but it's got to be worth a grand, isn't it? In fact, actually, how much does that work out an hour? How much does that work out a month or a year? So if you used to do that every, if you used to do that five nights a week for a grand a night, that, anyway, irrelevant, whatever, it's a movie, it's not real. You can't really go and get a job at Willy's Wonderland. Completely pointless, train of thought, that one. But still, you know, full content. Yeah. So in the absence of Samir and his facts and trivia, or facts and figures as he likes to call it for some reason, I'm not, you know, it's not like we're producing KPIs or something, but there, you know, it's like, I guess it's like a slip of the tongue or Freudian slip. So 
facts and trivia. It's a bit difficult for this one because there really isn't a massive amount of trivia out there on the internet about this movie. It's obviously not a very popular movie. It's only got a 5.5 rating on IMDb. So probably the biggest piece of trivia that comes from this movie is the similarities between Willy's Wonderland and F the Five Nights at Freddy's video game series. I think that's probably what drew me to it, because although um, I'm aware of Five Nights at Freddy's, I've never really played them to any degree. Um, I've seen, obviously, YouTube videos and the jump scares and people just going, oh my god, and pretending to be so fucking scared and get millions of views. Uh, but, but baffles me that does anyway. Um, so, the guy who released the Five Nights at Freddy's series, uh, his name is Scott Cawthon, and it all came about via a rather fortunate mistake or fortunate series of events. He was predominantly focused on sort of family-friendly games, and I believe that he is uh, quite a devout Christian. So his previous video games were sort of family-orientated, you know, just good old-fashioned fun, not uh, based on violence and scariness and horror and all that kind of stuff. Um, so he released a game in 2013, I believe, on the, uh, the gaming platform, the gaming um, store called Steam. And it was under the Steam Greenlight banner, which is kind of games that were released um, to a select audience to gauge public opinion to see if they're worth developing any further. And this game is called Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. Now, I remember a video game critic, journalist, called Jim Sterling. He, um, he has a YouTube channel, and I used to follow him back in the day for his, um, his con rather consumer-savvy and pro-consumer choice video game reviews. He was quite harsh on games publishers and things like that, and you know that kind of appeals to me because um, viewers, you may or may not play video games, but if you do play video games, um, you might be like me in my early 40s, absolutely sickened by the fucking predatory state of microtransactions and gambling mechanics, etc., that are shoehorned into video games and deliberately crippling the gameplay in order to get more money out of you for AAA games that you've already spent £60, $70, whatever it may be on. Crazy stuff. So Jim Sterling criticised this game. He did, a, he did a video review of it, and the characters within this um, Chipper and Sons Lumber Co., were very disturbing. They're kind of creepy. The way that they, um, the way that they worked, the way that they looked, and Jim, as well as other video game critics, just ripped this to pieces and said, "You know, well, this is fucking disturbing. What's going on?" Now it is understood that Scott took that criticism to heart, and um, was a little bit disappointed, but turned lemons into lemonade and said, "Well, I tell you what, I'm going to do. Then I'm going to use these character designs, these creepy character designs." And I'm going to set them up as animatronics in this kind of um, uh, like a diner type kind of environment. And the situation is, is the player is put into like a uh, into like a back office where there's lots of CCTV cameras and stuff, and you can see things. And the idea is, is that you watch a camera when you see something, and you keep switching from camera to camera to camera to stop these animatronics creeping in into the office and eventually um, grabbing you and massacring you, I guess. And the idea being that you survive as long as possible, or five nights, at, five nights at Freddy's. Now, obviously, Willy's Wonderland has animatronic characters that do come to life and that do claw through people, tear stuff up, um, some sort of demonic possession. So there is a lot of similarities there. Another fact or piece of trivia from this movie is that Nicolas Cage, who obviously is, you know, is a household name, why would he get involved in a small time project like this? Well, he was attracted by the fact that he didn't have to say a single word. And he wanted to do a non-speaking part, which is bizarre really. I mean, there's some moments in this film where you're just kind of like, uh, you know, almost, almost just, it's, it's just almost on the tip of his tongue that he's gonna say at least something, you know, or go fuck yourself or just anything. But he doesn't. He holds it together and says nothing. Um, and that's quite interesting. Actually, I, if I was an actor, I would find that quite interesting. Just trying to do things by facial expression alone um, and exaggerate movements. Maybe in some interpretive dance, who knows? But uh, it's quite interesting to watch. And Nicolas Cage, not a massive fan of him, but um, yeah, he, did, he played the part quite well. So, 
in terms of trivia, um, I think that's about it, really. Bit of a shit show, really. Sorry about that. Couldn't find anything else out. Let's move on to final thoughts. Is it a movie I'd recommend that you go and see? Um, yeah, I suppose it is, actually. It's just a bit of mindless fun, really. It's not particularly scary. It's in the horror category, and I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, I suppose there's a few jump scares. In terms of gore and violence, um, I mean, there's plenty of violence, yeah. Gore, you know, a bit of blood splatter here and there. It's not too bad. Um, but it's just... I guess it's just interesting. It's more like a fucking art project than anything else. And, of course, I mentioned the similarities between Five Nights at Freddy's. That does seem to be a, somewhat of a, an inspiration to the people that wrote this uh, screenplay. Um, I think Nicolas Cage, he... I think that he plays the same person in every film that he's in. He talks the same, he acts the same. He's just Nicolas Cage in every film. So to see him in this and not say anything is actually pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, he does a fairly convincing job of playing playing the hard guy, janitor. Um, there's a lot of mystery surrounding his character. I mean, you don't have a fucking clue how this guy knows how to fight, how this guy knows how to drive a car in a, in a fashion that he does. It's it's quite an intriguing story, really, but you learn nothing of that. He is literally just a throwaway character. He just turns up and fucks off at the end of the day, you know, or should I say in the morning, the following morning. Yeah, it's, I like the aesthetics, actually, of this film. I do like the, um, the, the sort of the, it's dark in places, but not dark enough that you can't actually see what's going on. You know, you can watch a lot of films where they just overplay the darkness and you're like squinting at the screen or turning the contrast up. You're like, what the fuck's going on? Um, there's none of that. It's watchable and it's fine. The storyline is a bit weak, obviously. It's going to be for a film like this. It does, it does require you to just sit there and uh, turn your brain off you don't really have to think on anything about this. There's, there's no everything is explained to you. Um, the first, I think, probably the first act of the movie is getting to understand the the imminent danger that everybody is in, and then after that, you get the reveal. Um, um, apparently, it's all demonic possession. Um, Willy's Wonderland was created by a bunch of um, serial killers. Serial killers unite. They've got their own union, obviously. Uh, they build build their own little uh, fun factory for kids and stuff for the parents to come in and eat hot dogs and whatnot. Um, yeah, obviously the uh, engage the um, serial killers wanted to engage in a little bit of capitalism there. Marvelous. So the idea is is that these guys all killed themselves as they got found out for murdering people. Um, the police looked to infiltrate the building and. Um, they all kill themselves, make some sort of suicide pact, and that's it. So they've kind of been, their souls have kind of been transplanted into these animatronic things. Um, the animatronics themselves actually are quite good fun, and I thought that they were they're quite well done. They're, they're, they look menacing, but they're not shit your pants scary, and there's not all bits hanging off of them or something like that. They do actually look like they could be part of a part of a kid's theme park. They're slightly fucked. I think probably the... Um, the biggest one of note is um, Siren Sara, who has this kind of like stitched up mouth. There's a particular scene in this actually that um, I, I I laughed out loud. It was hilarious. Where Siren Sara and there's another animatronic character and they're facing off with um, Nicolas Cage, the janitor, and music comes on um, and it's kids music. It's hilarious, and obviously you've got. Siren Sara and the other animatronic all gearing up, you know, all doing like fancy flips and stuff and shit like that. And you've got Siren Sara doing cartwheels and that towards him. And Nicolas Cage is the janitor. You've got Siren Sara coming towards him and he just goes, bosh, puts his head straight through her. And you see the, you see the character, the animatronic character just flip and land on the floor. It was fucking hilarious. Loved it. Just bang, took her out with one nut right in the face. <laughs> Brilliant. 
some other things about this movie. Um, the it's got the usual teenage twattery, you know, the fucking oh we know everything and we're going to go in and burn it down and stuff and blah 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 blah. And unfortunately, you've got the usual sort of teenage twattery stereotypes in here as well. And when you watch it, you'll understand what I mean by that. You know, people talk in a certain way and people act in a certain way and people are dressed in a certain way. And as you think, oh god, right, okay. So there's no thought in that side of things. And the 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 love interest between Liv and um, the other fucking guy, the guy that's like literally licking the, the Chris, played by um, Kai Cadleck. He, he literally like is licking the path in front of the character Liv, um, you know, just trying to get laid, you know. And you know, if you're a man, you know, we've all done it, haven't we? All like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, just go along with everything because she says so. And you know, you might get a bit of yeah, you know, a bit of stink finger at the end of it, but chances are you won't. Unrequited love and all that bullshit. So that love interest, it doesn't last that long, and it's not over the top either. So thank God for that, you know. The, you know, thank God for small mercies. It's not drawn out too long. Um, he ends up getting slaughtered because he's the, the, the trusting and the um, wants to help type. So there's a particular scene in that. If you watch it, you'll see it and you'll be like, if you're like me, you'll be like, oh, thank God that prick has been wiped out. <clears throat> Things of note on this. Um, there is a particular scene where Nicolas Cage is playing a pinball machine and he breaks into this rather odd, cumbersome dance routine. And that is mentioned a lot throughout um, various different posts about this uh, this film it is odd um it is odd it is very odd when you watch it, you, you kind of uh, you're looking at it and you're thinking am i supposed to be into this am i supposed to be you know, supposed to get the blood racing i think the the idea behind it was is that he was gearing himself up for kind of the final boss battle you know the, the, the willy himself the final animatronic that's left at the end so he's kind of gearing himself up for that. Um, I don't think it worked particularly well. Um, and apparently Nicolas Cage just made all that up. He just improvised the whole lot and they just kind of thought, ah, fair enough, leave it in. You know, he's Nicolas Cage. He's the biggest name in this fucking movie. So very odd. I think um, one of the things I actually do quite enjoy about this is almost OCD level of... Um, Nicolas Cage, the janitor, taking his breaks. He's got um, regular intervals set up on his watch where it beeps at him and he just walks back into the kitchen, opens up an energy drink, downs it, plays a bit of pinball and his watch goes off again and then he gets back to cleaning. I have to say at this point, absolutely fucking brilliant cleaner. I mean, that place was spotless when he left it the following morning. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, you would have thought Nicolas Cage was a domestic goddess. Fucking amazing. But there's one particular point where they're about to engage in combat, him and the character Liv. They're about to engage in combat with an animatronic, and um, his watch goes off. So he hands her uh, a pocket knife, I think it is, and then walks off and goes and plays pinball for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've known people like that. I've worked with people like that, which is, I think, why I found it funny, because... I've worked with people that are so obsessed with taking their breaks because, oh, well, you know, if I don't take my breaks, then I'm, I'm earning less an hour, therefore less a week, less a month, less a year. I'm not earning my full salary. If I don't take my full, full break allocation or full holiday allocation, and they have a point, but, I mean, fucking hell, the job's got to get done, isn't it? All right, since I'm doing this by myself, it's not going to be a big, lengthy 30-minute conversation, obviously, and the source material really isn't um, Oscar-worthy stuff, so there's not really any kind of subliminal meanings or any kind of morals to be learned from this. It's just an action movie with a few jump scares thrown in. Um, so I think I'm probably going to wrap this up with my scores. I actually gave this a six. Now, a six, some people might think you're mental. I think the average at the moment on imdb.com is about 5.5 rating for this film. And as I said, it's not going to win any awards. It's, it's more of like a fun project. It's like someone's just had an idea and, and they've got $5.5 million, which was the budget, to go ahead and do it. Um, obviously, getting Nicolas Cage on board was a big coup for them, I think. Um, but I think six is 
an average, an averaging score. I mean, I've given some Bond movies a six, um, because I find I found when I thought about this deeply, deeply, deeply thought about this. I thought I've given Bond movies six, and I felt the same way about this movie as I did some of the Bond movies. Is that they are mildly entertaining. There are bits in there that are fun to watch, but overall, it's a film that you just you're just going to forget about, aren't you? You know. Well, some people are going to forget about. I'm going to forget about like uh, Willy's Wonderland and um, multiple Roger Moore Bond movies. I'm going to forget about those rather quickly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a bit of fun, you know. It's not um, three and a half hours, two hours worth of watching time either. It's a, it's just under an hour and a half. It's quite nicely paced. It doesn't lull in any way. There's always something going on. Um, whether it be some sort of action sequence and some animatronic um, nonsense or um, some teenage twattery, um, it, it paces itself quite well. Um, yeah, so I think six is a fair score. Okay, well, thanks for watching this, this solo review. I don't have the rest of the team with me, as I said. Hopefully it hasn't been too awful for you. Maybe I'll do some more of these if the viewings go well and I get some likes on it. Who knows? Okay, well, let's leave it there then. That's it for Willy's Wonderland and my solo effort. I hope that um, you found some interest in this and it wasn't an absolute shit show as I thought it might be. Um, like us on social media. Uh, you can listen to the podcast rather than watch if you prefer. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Right, so it's goodbye from me.